The following content is provided by Recovering Your Harvest of Grace Outreach Ministry. Welcome to Harvest of Grace Radio, a program dedicated to uplifting, equipping, and empowering the people of God according to His Word. Stay tuned to be challenged and encouraged by the Word of God. Open your Bible as Rev. Kevin Green teaches us to harvest the grace God has for us. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Family, we're glad that you tuned in today. Thank you for tuning in to Harvest of Grace Radio, and we are on AM 630, The Word. And what a time, what a time we are having in the Lord. We're just thankful for all your prayers, all your donations, as we get ready for our first annual Walk Into Your Destiny shoe drive, which will be the 21st of May at Travis Park <clears throat> from 11 to 3. We really want to see all of you out there. We thank God for your prayers, for your donations, and we, and we solicit your prayers and your donations as well because we know that God is going to do something powerful in this because when you give to others, God will give to your house. If you don't ever bless other people, don't expect God to bless you because <clears throat> he, he's a God that wants you to do first because he wants to see where your heart is at. Family, we're excited. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. You know, we, uh, we started a series entitled It's Not God's Fault. And in this series, we have been uh, didactically and, and meticulously dealing with um, certain reasons why it is not God's fault and why people want to try to blame God for, for situations that were not caused by him, but were caused by the uh, choices that we made. And that's one of the things about life. People don't want to deal with the choices that they made because the choices that they made, that's what got them in the situation that they are in now. And so with that being said, family, pray that you have your Bibles with you out there in Radio Land. Thank you for tuning in to AM 630 The Word. Hope you have your Bibles with you. And family, we are coming from the book. Check this out, y'all. <clears throat> I love this. The book of Genesis, chapter 3. Genesis, chapter 3. And this is AM 630, the word. And we're, we're going to start with verse uh, 10. He answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, and this is God, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. I want to stop there. I want to talk about the blame, the shame, and the pain. The blame, the shame, and the pain. When we're young, children don't know how to lie. They don't know how to tell a fib or a little white lie. They don't know how to do that. Uh, until they get around certain people and kids pick up on the characteristics of those who they are around who have an influence on them. And some kids, <clears throat> they start picking up certain habits that are not conducive for them to grow into great young men or great young women. And so therefore, uh, they pick up certain habits. So here we are in the text in Genesis chapter 3, and starting at verse 10, we see that there are some habits that are starting to form. There are some habits that are going to be uh, very hard to break. There are some habits that are going to cause a downward spiral, not just for them, because if you know the history, you know that his son was killed by his other son. His son was murdered, family violence. And so with that being said, we see that there are some, there are some stuff, some things that are happening in this text 
that we can see now that are happening in 2022 because of mistakes that were made uh, millions, hundreds, hundreds of million years ago. And so because of that being said, I simply want to get on this point that the blame game, you blame somebody for a mistake you made. You blame somebody that, oh, they didn't tell me this or no, that's not right. So we blame people. But let me tell you what happens with the blame game. Whenever you point a finger at somebody else, you got three fingers pointing back at you. So whenever you try to blame somebody else, it always comes back to you. And likewise, here in this text, in this lesson today, we see that the finger is pointed. <clears throat> but God is not concerned about the woman. He's concerned about the man. This is why it's very important that a man will be who he's supposed to be, that a man will stand up and be the man of God that he is supposed to be, take ownership, take authority, and take leadership over what God has placed in his hands. Because if the man doesn't accept leadership and authority, it doesn't matter because God is still going to hold the man accountable <clears throat> because the man is accountable for everything that happens in the household. And so just because the woman did the first action by, by seeing, by taking, by eating, and then by sharing, watch this. God was not worried about that. He charged Adam. And the reason why he charged Adam family was simply because Adam had conversation and dialogue and he had study with God. So God was telling him the do's and don'ts in the Bible. I mean, the do's and don'ts in the garden, the do's and don'ts in life, but yet and still, he still wanted to please his wife, per se, and he took and he partook of sin. And so because of sin and because of the schism, a schism is a split, and because of this wedge that, that was placed between God, watch this, man and woman, because now there is an open enemy in the garden, his name is the serpent, later to be known as Satan, Lucifer. But in the garden, his tag name is the serpent. And this serpent has become an open enemy to man. And he and, and, and check this out. I want to teach somebody something. The serpent is never an enemy to God. You want to know why? Because there's nothing he can do to hurt God. An enemy is only an enemy if they can cause harm to you. A nemesis is only a nemesis if they can cause harm to you. But the enemy, our enemy, he can't harm God. And that's why he tries to put a wedge and a split between us and God. Because since he can't get to God, the next best thing is to get to you and to get to me. And that's exactly what happened here in the text family. We see that the split is happening. And the split is happening because Adam he did not allow himself to be the leader that he was supposed to be. He did not allow himself to be the man of God that he was supposed to be because he walked with God in the cool of the day, because he had dialogue with God, and because they were having a conversation, God taught him certain jewels to hand to his wife. And man, let me just say this, we are held to a higher standard and more accountable. Even though the woman might, might lead by default because the man is sorry, because the man is not there, God still holds the man accountable, which is why the man has to stand up, which is why the man has to give direction, he has to give leadership, and he has to set stuff in order. But let me tell you this, sometimes God will use the woman in your life to help you understand how to set order how to put things in order and how to make things come together out of chaos. And so here it is that God says, uh, Adam says to God, he said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid. So I hid. God already knew what happened, but he's entertaining what he's saying. And listen, God entertains what we say. God entertains what we say. He already knows what's going to happen because he knew this way back before, before, he, before the world was even made. He knew what we were going to do, but he entertains to see how are we going to respond. 
And so he said, I heard you in the garden. I was, and I was afraid, so I hid. And God said, who told you you were naked? Why? Because all before this episode with the serpent, they were walking around just as naked and free as a jail uh, jailbird. Just, just walking around naked, not even being ashamed of anything, uh, not worried about anything. But when the enemy came and put the wedge, and the wedge he put was, do you really take God at his word? And if you don't trust God at his word, and if you don't know God's word, and if you don't believe God's word, the enemy is able to get you to adapt to what he has for you. And he's able to strip, watch this, the clothing that God has for you of grace and mercy. He's able to strip the blessing that God has for you. But the good news is he might can hide it from you, but he cannot take it from you forever. He might hide it and put it out of your eyesight simply because God does not like sin. But when you get your life together and when you get yourself together, family, God is able to give you back what you lost. So let's go deeper in the study, family. My name is Pastor Kevin Green, and this is AM 630, The Word. And he said, um, you have eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from. Okay, now that's sin, that's disobedience. When God tells us to do something and we don't, it's simply flat out point blank sin. And sin separates us from God. Sin separates us from the saturation of blessings from God. But still, God does not love the sin, but he does love the sinner. Let me repeat that. God does not love the sin, but he loves the sinner. You can ask Jonah in chapter four about that. Because Jonah was upset at God because he wanted to send him to the people that were killing his people. This is Jonah. But God told him in the last two verses of chapter four, he said, I made these people and I want them to have a choice and a chance to come back to repentance. But sometimes we have to understand that God, he always wants us to have eternal life. He always wants us to win. But you have to want to win. Listen, it's not a fight on the outside if you haven't start fighting on the inside. If you don't start the fight on the inside and family in 2022, we are in the fight of our life. We are in the fight against the enemy and the enemy has come in the form of bad political procedures. He's coming in the form of poverty. He's coming in the form of liberality. He's coming in the form of all these things that are putting uh, a split between God and people. Listen, it's great that people go to church, but the church is not going to save you. What's going to save you is a personal relationship with God. What's going to save you is when you give your heart and your life and accept Jesus Christ. That's going to save you. A building can't save you. People can't save you. But God can save you. And so here it is, y'all, the, uh, uh, the blame game. He said, the man said, the woman you put here, she gave me the fruit. There it is, the blame. Blame has been around since Genesis chapter 3. We always blame people for the mistakes that we made. And the first point was the shame. The shame was that they were naked. They were ashamed of who they were underneath. And how many right now are dealing with psychological problems? You're, you're, you're dealing with problems of acceptance of yourself. No matter what's wrong with your body, no matter what the doctor said about your mind, you're having trouble accepting yourself because people look at you funny, because people say stuff to you that's not right. But I want to tell somebody right now that God loves you and accepts you for who you are because he made you who you are. He made you unique. He made you perfect. He made you gifted. And if somebody does not accept you, never be ashamed of who you are. Because God made you to be a light in a dark world so that somebody might see the flicker of light coming from your life. And that flicker of light will, will be like a lighthouse and it will draw them closer to the light. And when they get closer to you, you can push them closer to Christ. And so it's not okay to be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of anything you've done if you've been on drugs Whatever you've been involved with in your past, it is the past. But we thank God that he allows us to have a present 
and a future. So don't let the things of your past cause you to feel shame and be shameful because God does not want us to be ashamed of anything. He wants us to be remorseful. He wants us to have a mindset that, Lord, forgive me for this, but don't be ashamed and don't let the enemy try to take away the grace and take away the gift that God has for you because shame will cause you to be like a turtle and go into your shell when the Lord wants you to stick your head out, <clears throat> when the Lord wants you to come alive so you can bless people and help people. So shame. And, and now the blame. <laughs> and <clears throat> even now, in every household in, in America, there's a blame game going on. Somebody's blaming somebody. Somebody is blaming somebody for something that they did, but they don't want to take ownership. Mm. God made us owners of this life. God made us masters of this life. Now, you and I have to take ownership pick up the pieces, we have to learn how to have authority. We have to learn how to be meek. That's power under control. We have to learn how to be strong in situations that we have to. We have to learn how not to be ashamed of what happened the day before or the year before. And don't blame people when it's you. Learn how to take control of the situation. Learn how to give it to God and watch what God will do. When God sees that you have ownership over what you've done, God will start to elevate you. God will start to open doors for you. And God will start to bless you in unique ways that you never imagined before. <clears throat> and so he said, the woman did this. And then God says, what is this you have done? And here it is. <clears throat> um, the woman said, the serpent deceived me. Now, wait a minute. It's the blame game. It's going down from the man to the woman and now to the serpent. The blame game. He put it on the table, but you chose to eat it off the plate. He put it on the table, but you chose to eat off the plate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which means this, which means you had the opportunity not to partake of what was on the plate, but you took it willingly. And because you willingly took it, now there's consequences and repercussions. But guess what? Just because there is a consequence and a repercussion, God delivers grace to those who ask for forgiveness. Watch this and repent. Do you know the problem here? They did not repent. Repent means to, it's a military term. It means to make an about face, to turn the opposite direction. So this is sin. When I make an about face, I turn away from my sin and I turn toward God, which means I turn towards life. Mm. So when we repent, mentanoia in the Greek, when we repent, what we're telling God is, I'm going to turn away from this. But they didn't turn away. They were too busy being ashamed and now blaming each other. And now here comes the pain. Watch this. The pain happens. And watch how just God is. God deals with it in the order that it should. So he said, the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, because he was the one that put it on the plate, so he's the one that is going to take the first blow. Watch this. Because of this, you have done, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly. Hold up. Check this out. Now, I, I love watching National Geographic, and I love watching animal shows. Do you know that snakes have little legs that are not, de not, not developed? that are underneath their chest. And because they have this, this lets us know that what God is saying is true. He said, curse to you to crawl on your belly, which means they cannot use 
these arms. They're there, but they're not there because God cursed them. And so because of this, the pain starts that the serpent is cursed. Watch this. So this is when God cursed the serpent. He cursed the enemy. And so that means he's crawling on his belly and he's eating dust all the days of his life. And watch this. He puts a split between the woman and him. And how many men on here know that women love snakes? <laughs> we all know that's not true. Women cannot stand snakes. They can't stand nobody who's sneaky, who acts like a snake or has any kind of characteristics of a snake. But he put a split between them. And that's not just talking about a physical snake. Watch this. It's talking about he put a split between them and the enemy, which means a woman can have discernment, but sometimes they still fall into the trap, just as men do. And then it says, all the days of your life, and it said, between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, and he said, he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Now, this is important be because that is prophecy. Uh, now we're dealing with, with prophecy because he said that you're going to crush the snake, but the snake is going to bite you on the heel. And this is dealing with Christ, that Christ crushed the snake on Calvary's cross. He crushed the snake, but the snake still bit the heel when it came to death. That's why Corinthians lets us know, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And so the head was crushed. And because the head was crushed, because he is the leader of, uh, of adversity and pain, the serpent is, he crushed him and he bit his heel. But, but, but watch this. But it says, he said the woman's going to have pain in her childbearing. So this lets us know that before this, God did not want man to experience pain. The pain came mentally. Huh. The pain came in the heart because now there's a split. And now the pain comes physically for the man because the man is tasked to till, to take care of the garden and eat the vegetation from the garden. So now the man has to work when God put him to work, but not work in that much and capacity and that degree because God was going to provide for them. But because sin separated, watch this. Now God is saying, this is what happens when you disobey. This is what happens when you eat off the plate of somebody who has something that looks so good, it looks so tempting, and you take it. And now, because of that bite, as soon as you bit it, your world as you knew it changed it. Changed. And how many of us know that we have done that before? We took a bite of a relationship. We took a bite of a drug. Oh my God. We took a bite of a belief system. And our life as we knew it changed from that day until the Lord, watch this, renewed us, revived us, removed us. And then after he re removed us, he put us back where we were supposed to be. And that's what's going to happen in the text. God is going to bless us, the children of Adam and Eve. But he had to punish because the Bible says that God chastises or those that he loves. So just because you feel in pain, just because you feel like you have a problem, just because you feel like something's wrong, God is trying to get you in position because God doesn't want to banish you from his presence, but he wants you to be blessed by being in his presence. And so you, you, you have the shame. They were naked and they knew they were naked. Then you had the blame game. It's this woman. No, it's the serpent. And then you had the pain, the mental pain, <clears throat> pain in the heart, then the physical pain for the man. So, family, we pray that this word blessed you. Remember, we are on AM 630, the word. This is your brother, your friend, Pastor Kevin Green, my beautiful wife who is watching and in her absence, Pastor Brenda Green. We want you to know on May 21st at Travis Park, from 11 to 3 p.m., we will be doing our first annual 
Walk Into Your Destiny shoe drive. If you would like to donate, if you would like to pray, if you would like to sponsor and support us, please go to our website, Recovering Your Harvest of Grace Outreach and Ministries, or go to our Facebook page, Recovering Your Harvest of Grace, and, and put your information, and we will get in contact with you. Family, we pray that this word blessed you. We pray that this word will help you understand why God, why it's not God's fault that we did it and now we got to deal with it. God bless you. Reverend Kevin Green and Minister Brenda White Green are passionate ministers of the Word of God and seek to challenge the body of Christ to receive all that God has in store. Thank you for listening to Harvest of Grace Radio. It's our desire that you connect with a Bible-believing church that would encourage you to believe all the promises of God for your life. For more information on Harvest of Grace Radio, please visit the program guide at am630theword.com. I Am Refocus Radio is brought to you by FOO 4 Star and Holy Crab. FOO 4 Star is a family-owned Asian restaurant in San Antonio, Texas. We have been a local favorite for Asian cuisine for over 10 years. With nothing but full smiles and fast service, you'll be leaving satisfied. Come on in for some authentic Vietnamese food. Holy Crab is one of a kind Cajun Creole style seafood restaurant located in Universal City, Texas. We offer traditional seafood items as well as chicken and steak. We also offer seafood boils. Come give us a try, you won't be disappointed. You can find these two eateries in Universal City, Texas at 2921 Pat Booker Road.